those of us that are here in uniform today uh, take on a special dedication to ensuring that the youth of today understand what it took for them to go to school, to go play their Xbox, to go ride their bike, go play basketball, go shopping in a store. Um, without the folks that came before us and the folks that are currently still fulfilling that mission, none of those things would be possible. And we need to make it obvious and physically present a unified front so that everybody understands that there is a cost to the liberties that we enjoy. We paid that price. My name's Dick Wade, served in the Air Force. I was in Taiwan and Germany. Dave Bauer, I served in Vietnam from 1967 to 1968. Three years in the Army. Ron was uh, in the U.S. Army, spent one year in Korea, two tours in Germany. Terry Jackson, U.S. Air Force, was in 56 to 60. Ted Lanfear, Air Force, 64 to 70. Albert Carvalho, I live in Ripley, New York. I served in Korean duty from 1956 to 1958. I'm here to celebrate our veterans, past and present. It was originally started as Armistice Day, the ending of World War I, which ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. It gradually over the years changed to Veterans Day, which we celebrate all our veterans, past and present. My name is Saran Rotunda, and I served in the United States Navy. In 1972 to 1979, I'm active duty, and in a few years, I'm reserve duty. Dan Harris, United States Marine Corps, 58 to 62. Our military is preserving our freedom that we've earned since the Declaration of Independence was signed, and, and it's been like that ever since. You know, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, Air Force, um, they're here, we're here today and enjoying all these freedoms that we have, freedom of speech, and every, every right under the Constitution. And this gentleman is a World War II vet. This is Bill Molson, gunner's mate Bill. It was South Pacific, two and a half years. Liberation of the Philippines was the first battle I was in out there. And I missed on uh, Iwo Jima. Because we were in a dry dock getting repaired from a suicide plane. How you doing, my man? Good to see you. Sure, Cliff Hubbard. United States Navy. I was a radarman on an aircraft carrier for three years. Well, it means more every day, especially the way things are going in the country today. We need more uh, respect, I think, for each other. And I think the military has a lot to do with that. And, and uh, I just hope that uh, the country can get through this, which I'm sure we will. We've done, we've gotten through worse things in the past. And I'm sure we, we and it, I believe it will make us stop. I'm Gary Roosh. <laughs> the Iranian rescue mission, when we had the hostages in Iran, Frank Rochelle. Where did you serve? In uh, Air Force in uh, 69 and spent a year over in Thailand. How you been? Good, you? You went through some physical problems. My father was part of the founding group that started uh, the, the plan, the memorial. And so it was a great honor to be able to be doing this year in, year out for our Veterans Day. Um, there is a very large list of veterans up there, both living and dead, that you know, they're honored uh, from the Ripley area, and it's a, a great honor to continue this tradition uh, every year. Just being a, a viable force and 
protecting our country. That's why I think the military has always been about protecting our country. The veterans please fall in over here pointing to the flag. These are their golden poppies to celebrate our golden anniversary. Uh, if you haven't got one yet, see us after the service. Forward, march. I'd like to introduce the commander of the American Legion Post, Stan Harris. On this day, Veterans Day, we are commemorating the service of all veterans, especially veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve their nation's cause, defending the freedom of mankind, and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strength on the field of battle, on the supply lines which nourished our might, lay in the justice of our cause against the force of evil. We believe our determination made us warriors because we fought with our minds and our hearts as well as our bodies. We recognize service to our country and her cause does not end with the termination of military service. We continue our endeavors in behalf of an honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as part of the cost of the snow bust of causes. Out of blood and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These are the solid stones upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these virtues. This time I'd like to introduce retired Marine Master Sergeant Robert McIntosh from the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank all of you for coming, especially this year and all the vets that made it again. I'm glad we're looking at each other, not down at each other. <laughs> For generations, the men and women of America's armed forces have demonstrated their willingness to put country before self. Patriots who serve for the greater good and don't seek glory or recognition nor personal gain. On November 11th, our Veterans Day, our nation honors the contributions of the nearly 22 million veterans living today. Also, all those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of liberty and justice. History provided us with extraordinary examples of their selfless deeds. We've brought hope, faith, and liberty to millions of people around the world. A true number of people who have benefited cannot be calculated, and the number of erected memorials, our speeches delivered, cannot begin to represent the true scope of service our nation's veterans have provided. 
The debt we owe to the defenders of this great nation is ever present and it's imperative that on especially this Veterans Day we take the opportunity to keep alive the memories, sacrifices, and accomplishments of our nation's veterans. It is not a day for veterans alone. It's a day for all Americans to be a part of because every citizen has a role to play in carrying the legacy and burden of freedom. Each citizen must work to ensure that America fulfills its promise to provide our veterans with the benefits and entitlements we've earned. We must be willing to pick them up when they're down, point the way to a new life when they return home, carrying them when they are weary, and we are obligated to do no less the VFW thanks every soldier, sailor, marine, airman, and coast guardsman for their service. We ask all Americans to say a prayer of thanks for those serving, for they are far away from family, friends, and home. This time, I'd like to have retired Army Sergeant First Class James Tolbert, front and center. United States of America, to all who shall see these presents greeting. This is to certify that the President of the United States, authorized by Executive Order 20, by an Executive Order dated 24 August 1962, has awarded the Bronze Star Medal to certain First Class James M. Colbert, part of Combined Joint Interagency Task Force 435, for exceptionally meritorious service as platoon sergeant while deployed in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Sergeant First Class Tolbert provided outstanding leadership while resourcing, executing, and manning the Quick Reaction Force, providing a secure environment for Camp Sabul Harrison. His outstanding dedication led to countless accolades from all senior leaders, Sergeant First Class Tolbert's distinctive accomplishments are in keeping with the highest honors and traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself. Combined Joint Interagency Task Force 435 in the U.S. Army. From January 19, 2014 to 17 October 2014. <coughs> Given under my hand, Patrick J. Reinhardt, Brigadier General, U.S. Army. James' name will be added to our roll of honor. Uh, when the plaque comes in, we'll display it. Also, at this time, I'd like to announce that uh, Michael Rader, United States Marine Corps served in Vietnam, was wounded, and his Purple Heart will be also be added to our wall of honor. Thank you. Congratulations. Chaplain? Yes, the Veterans Day prayer. Comrades, great rest, uncover. Almighty God, Father of us all, we, your servants, turn to you for continuance of your blessings upon us. You who have spared us veterans from the grasp of our enemies, grant us the full understanding of your precious comfort. We thank you for the privileges of life and the blessings we enjoy through your graciousness in our country, a land in which we are given the freedom of speech, religion, and the pursuit of happiness. Assist us to know you better and the wisdom to acknowledge you as the God of the universe and our ideal. In your mercy, may we 
the living find our peace. Grant us above this day, from above this day, the challenge of high endeavor, the beauty of a humble spirit, the strong courage and will without exertion to continue to glorify you, to praise you, and to love you from now and to the end. Amen. Amen. Fire and heat kill, fall off. Fire and guard! Hit! Hook! Hook! Half left! Ready! Aim! Fire! Ready! Aim! Fire! Ready! Aim! Fire! Hook! Half right! Freeze it! Hurt! been extremely supportive of our veterans. Uh, we have a, a VFW group and we also have a VFW group in uh, Westfield. We have joint honor guards which uh, we provide honor guard services uh, for military and veterans funerals and so um, the, the community is very very supportive of all this. Um, everybody you know quite a few people that support the military you know our families that grew up in military families and so their sons and daughters are going off and and also joining the military so it's quite a, an honored tradition around here to to support armed services what's so interesting about Ripley is that this is an area like so many others like North Georgia or South Texas this is where the soldiers come from these are the young men who go off to war to fight for their country for the freedom of these people, their homes, their families, their friends. I am retired Sergeant First Class James Tolbert. Yes, the Bronze Star, yes. Bronze Star. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, what that means and what that means to you? Um, for here, for get, getting recognized here in my hometown, it, it means it means quite a bit. A little, little more special happening here on uh, at the memorial on Ve Veterans Day, so uh, life's good. <laughs> yep, working here in the hometown uh, for the highway department, and life's good. My husband was a World War II veteran. He was that was my second marriage. My first husband passed away. He was a Korean veteran, a master sergeant. So my whole family has been military people, defending the country against foreign and probably internal evil. So every time I hear the national anthem, every time I hear taps, I get tears in my eyes just thinking, thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you so much. We can't even imagine what we would be without their protection. Sharon McIntosh. <laughs> I still can't see who's behind Rob. Oh, yeah. Rob, here. Rob, come on. Rob, this in, please. Where are, you, where are you? Are you over here? That'd be good. Okay. okay. Go. Jeez, Bonnie, you're tough. <laughs> Somebody's got to be. Now, you don't have to worry about smiling. That's Harry. No, Bonnie's head. Harry's over here. here. I can't see anybody. Oh, What's up? I can see all. Can you? <laughs> but you can't see it, you move.